I can now call Louise. Is it called Vicky? Kulbitsky. Hi uh, everyone, my name is Louise Kulbitsky and I work for the Eradicating Ecocide campaign. I'm standing here to address the council, Oxford Council, so that they can support this, the law of ecocide, and trigger more political support on a UK and global level. Today in 2012, we are seeing mass damage and destruction to people and the planet on a scale that we've never seen before in history. We've learned that there are nine planetary boundaries which are vital to ensure that the Earth system supports life, which, if crossed, will have devastating consequences for all life on Earth. We've already crossed three, and we're rapidly moving towards crossing the others. We need to act before it's too late. The root cause of these problems is that, at the moment, the number one rule governing our world is that corporations can maximise... Their, their number one priority is to maximise profit to their shareholders, even if this means making profit out of mass damage and destruction to people and the planet. Our economy is destroying the very thing that we want to sustain, and that's life. To achieve true sustainable development, we need to create an international crime of ecocide which puts a stop to this. Ecocide is defined as the extensive destruction, damage to, or loss of ecosystems of a given territory by human agency or other causes to such an extent that the peaceful enjoyment of the inhabitants of that territory have been severely diminished. So there are two types of ecocide. Firstly, man-made ecocide, which is often at the hands of a corporation, and then naturally occurring ecocide, such as climate change, anthropogenically caused climate change, which is essentially an act of God. Um, man-made ecocide, uh, as I said, it often occurs at the hands of a corporation. For example, the Athabasca tar sands, the Niger Delta, the logging of the Amazon. Um, we can't hold a company criminally liable, but we can hold those in a position of superior responsibility liable, those who actually make the decisions to carry out these destructive activities. Um, so naturally occurring ecocides are different. As I said, they include things like climate change. We can't hold a company liable for creating these kinds of things, but we can impose a legal duty of care on states to provide assistance to those facing these naturally occurring ecocides. And the two types of ecocide aren't completely separate. By putting a stop, full stop, to man-made ecocides, the kind of destruction that, that leads to um, naturally occurring ecocides, we have actually stopped things like, or we, we try to put a stop to runaway climate change. Um, the aim of this law is to put a stop to dangerous industrial activity. CEOs of companies are unlikely to continue business, which is giving rise to ecocide, as they could be held personally liable for this. Shareholders and banks won't invest in this kind of activity if they too could be criminally prosecuted. And investments and subsidies will be redirected into clean and green um, technologies and business. Um, if ecocide continues as well, it's not just about punishing those who commit it, it's about restoring the damage done, so restorative justice would be offered to offenders. Now, the ironic thing is that it's already an international crime to cause mass damage and destruction to the planet during wartime. It's just not a crime during peacetime. We already have a criminal court in place that could enforce this. And all we need to do to make this a reality is to make an amendment to the Rome Statute, which details the crimes, four crimes against peace. It only takes one party to the Rome Statute to call for an amendment, and it only takes 80 signatories to come on board and support this to get an amendment in place. Now, we're proposing that the law of ecocide comes into force in 2020. It allows an eight-year transition phase. Okay. One minute. All right, an eight-year transition phase to, to allow businesses to turn themselves around. This has happened time and time again throughout history, despite businesses claiming that there's going to be economic collapse. Businesses have turned themselves around very quickly. It happened in the abolition of slavery. It happened when CFCs were outlawed. Now, Oxford Council can play a significant role in making this happen. Oxford City stands out as a, a city that has put in place ideas which have global repercussions. If Oxford Council stands up and demonstrates bold, moral, courageous leadership on this, we can make this a reality. Now, this is our pathway to true sustainable development. And you can reach out to local MPs, the UK government, and ensure that the UK votes in favour of making ecocide an international crime. Thank you.
Okay, Matt, do you want to sum up? Yes. Okay. Um, it's funny because, uh, Mark, uh, when uh, I think it was Westminster was de debating the abolition of slavery, there was a lot of people, and I can't remember from whether it was Whigs or Tories, um, who put up various things saying, well, we could have a cap and trading system, we could reduce the number of slaves that were sent, we could maybe work them less hard, um, we could bring in various regulations to you know, ensure that, they're, that, that less of them died in transit, that they were given more space, that all this sort of thing. And luckily, none of those proposals were carried forward. But that's exactly what we've been doing with environment all along. We're basically saying, all we need to do is regulate better how we exploit our environment. And it hasn't worked at all. We're capping and trading is not going to work. You know, having tighter regulations and more use of uh, polluted pays is not going to work. That's just to sort of you know, that point there. Um, also, we need we need something to control the transnational companies where where you've got you know, British companies working in Canada who are who under whose jurisdiction, you know, who controls them. So we need some sort of transnational law. And I really regret what you brought up because it could well be an issue. But as far as I understand, um, Canada has already signed up to this. And as long as the law is actually held internationally, even if they pull out of it, they will still be under the jurisdiction of it. And so it will still be powerful. I mean, I'm not a legal expert. This is just what I've been reading up in my homework for this. Um, the other <coughs> point I'd like to mention is uh, to your thing about human justice and everything, that there is a peace cycle. And if you destroy a habitat, you create poverty. And if you create poverty, then you create um, competition for resources, and that will lead to conflict, which will lead to war, which tends to lead to even more damage to the environment. You create this, you know, this, you know, vicious cycle. And if we stop that cycle, if we basically put it to bed and say that's it, no more of that, it will make a huge difference. Um, is that my time up? That's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Very excited to see the first We have actually have 10 minutes left, so can we move to the vote, please? All those in favour? Don't forget to vote, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> it's carried. Thank you. Um, if we can move to four.